Our next speaker is B. Stanley Pons. He is chairman and professor in the Department of Chemistry, University of Utah. His specialties are electrochemistry and electrochemical kinetics. He received his PhD degree from the University of Southampton in England. He has been described by his colleagues as an innovative researcher. Before I have Stanley come on up, I'd like to comment, we were just informed before we came on, that a Dallas radio station has reported that the University of Moscow has just announced that it has successfully repeated the Pons Fleischmann experiment. With no further ado, Dr. Stanley Pons will address us on the electrochemically induced nuclear fusion. Stan? Thanks very much. It's incredible to me what an electrochemist has to do today to get an invitation to the American Chemical Society. <laughs> Thanks very much again for your invitation. Some years ago, I was discussing with Martin Fleischman in Utah on one of his visits uh, to Salt Lake City, the possibility of metallic hydrogen, formation of metallic hydrogen. We had had some interest in that area because of its possibilities as a fuel as well as uh, a superconductor. Uh, and in that context, we discussed the high pressures uh, that would be necessary in order to be able to derive that sort of uh, material. And we then started discussing the alternate ways of compressing uh, materials. And you've heard from Professor Yeager and Professor Bard uh, the possibility of high pressures or high equivalent pressures, high energies anyway, uh, by raising the chemical potential of, of a species. So a simple calculation, uh, similar to the one that uh, Professor Yeager just put up, uh, shows that you can attain astronomical pressures uh, if you were to use hydrostatic means to, to do the same thing. To, uh, generate these high uh, chemical potentials. It's the same sort of situation that arises when we consider what we have to do to derive the elements, sodium and chlorine, from sodium chloride. Uh, electrochemists know that that's quite easy to do uh, with an electrochemical cell, even on a large scale, whereas uh, you would be hard pressed to do this by uh, any other means. Essentially what we're doing here is putting the energy where it is wanted, and I think that's the focus of, uh, of our present research. So anyway, during those discussions, we agreed that these, these sorts of pressure equivalents, uh, if they could be established in metal lattices, must lead to more interesting reactions than just formation of uh, metallic hydrogen, and we consider the possibility of the fusion of light nuclei, specifically deuterons. So we designed a simple, far-fetched experiment. We tried it. We got a fairly spectacular result early on. Uh, and for the next few years, uh, continue to do things uh, a little more carefully. Can I have the first slide, please? I'm afraid they're backwards. That's the last one, actually. Thanks. This is the uh, cell. The cell is a block of palladium. Uh, it's very similar to the schematic model that uh, Professor Bard showed earlier on. The block of palladium is the center area there. The cell also has a uh, highly or actually calibrated thermistor for measuring the temperature inside the electrode. There is a resistive heater, which we use to inject known amounts or known quantities of heat for uh, calibration purposes and, and measurement. Uh, and there is a, a secondary electrode or auxiliary electrode, the anode, which is the, uh, these parallel lines. It's a, uh, a platinum wire wrapped around a glass basket. Uh, and then we have uh, a reference electrode, uh, palladium hydride reference electrode, uh, also in the system. So it's a fairly straightforward system. The next slide is a photograph of the U1 Utah tokamak. <laughs> Early on, we didn't have very much money, so we chose Rubbermaid here, which worked out quite well for the, for the water bath. But basically, uh, we use a potentiostat to drive the, uh, uh, the two electrodes in a constant current mode, which I'll talk about more in a few minutes. And then we have a, a, a water bath surrounding that, and we maintain the outside water bath to a uh, plus or minus uh, a hundredth of a degree. 
Okay, the reaction which has come up, next slide, the reaction which we have been uh, are discussing here uh, has been brought up earlier today. It is the reduction of deuterium at that uh, electrode to give an absorbed uh, atom of deuterium on the surface and then a, the possibility of the deuterium then uh, migrate or the diffusing into the uh, metal lattice and then the uh, possibilities then or the reality that the, it, when hydrogen starts to be evolved from the outside of that electrode for some number of hours or, or for some period of time you do not observe hydrogen evolution at the outside uh, but when it does occur uh, it may do so by several reactions one which is which is given here so the overall reaction path for deuterium uh, oh, this, the, the first and the last uh, reactions uh, up here are the uh, overall reaction path for D2 formation, so the chemical potential of the deuterium in the lattice, whatever its form is, is totally determined by the relative rates of this first reaction and any subsequent reaction such as number three there. Uh, and at all potentials less than plus 0.05 volts versus a, uh, a standard hydrogen electrode, we are in the beta phase, what is known as the beta palladium hydride phase. We will see that the deuterium is in the lattice as D+, plus, not as deuterium atoms, uh, and as was mentioned earlier, the uh, there's a diffusion coefficient uh, in the alpha phase at 300 degrees of around 10 to the minus 7. Okay, uh, the next slide shows a cartoon of the uh, energetics. We have, uh, upon absorption, it is well known that the atoms uh, are able to diffuse into the metal lattice, but not as, atom, uh, not as atoms, but uh, as deuterons. So we have a, a reaction coordinate here b uh, between the, uh, if we have a re uh, an energy diagram of, of the D2O going to deuterium atoms on the surface, we might imagine uh, that the energy surfaces would look something like this. And the next slide. And then as we continue to apply a potential across uh, the surface, an electrochemist would say, or would view this, uh, would view that the potential energy surface would be lowered or shifted by the difference in potential in the solution and the galvanic uh, potential inside the metal. 